All right. Good afternoon and welcome to InfoPoint, AlphaPoint's online learning platform. For over 100 years, AlphaPoint has been a national leader in the education and employment of those with vision loss. Today's webinar is Expanded Core at Home. And I real, just realized it still says independent living skills, but today's topic actually is assistive technology. We just wanted to see if you were paying attention. And joining us today is our Youth Services Manager, Jake McLaughlin. Say hello, Jake. You have to actually unmute yourself. Hello. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. And it's not raining on you too bad as it is here in Kansas City. So thanks for joining. So we're going to get started with a little bit of housekeeping. So this presentation is designed with accessibility in mind. If you have total vision loss or you're calling in, we will be describing what is on the slides. For those who have low vision, the slides have a black background with large yellow point font. If you are using color inversion software, you may have to flip it off. The um, key command for zoom text to do that is caps lock C. You can across the bottom raise your hand. Um, there's also a chat box feature so there should be a ribbon at the bottom or top of your screen depending on how you have your device set up. It may uh, go away if you're not actively using your mouse or if it's a touch screen device touching the screen. So if you wiggle your mouse or touch the screen that will bring that back up. You can go into the chat box to uh, share different resources or if you have a question you can go to that question and answer box that kind of um, for those with vision looks like speech bubbles that says Q&A and we will have a question and answer portion at the end of the webinar. So our objectives for today's webinar we do want to again list the nine areas of the expanded core. Um, we want to explain the importance of assistive technology as it relates to the expanded core curriculum and we want to discuss strategies to use at home. So a little bit of background. 80% um, of learning is visual. That's how our brains are hardwired. That is how our society and our schools are set up. That means for our students with visual impairments, we have to be more strategic in how we teach certain things. Um, that's where the expanded core curriculum comes in and it aids in concept development. Now we talked a lot about concept development um, in some of our previous webinars, but in a nutshell, a concept is so sort of an overarching category. So you might have a concept of a restaurant. And within that concept of a restaurant, you might have sit down, um, white jacket, fast food, uh, drive in. All of those are different types of restaurants and they fall under that umbrella of the restaurant concept. For our children with vision, we don't have to explain that as strategically because they can see all those different types of restaurants as you're driving down the highway and what the difference is between them. So we don't have to do as much instruction. But our students with visual impairments have a harder time being able to observe from a distance. So that is sort of what the expanded core helps with is developing those concepts and it helps us make education accessible. So we know that our students need different skills to access the general education classroom than their sighted peers do. Um, and that's one more part of the expanded core curriculum. So we have a graphic here explaining the expanded core curriculum. This graphic comes from www.perkins.org slash school slash ECC. And of course, ECC stands for expanded core curriculum. So in the center of this graphic in a gray circle is core academics. That's everything that students traditionally learn at school and it's shaped kind of like a puzzle piece. Surrounding that are more colorful puzzle pieces representing the nine areas of the expanded core curriculum that are needed to access that central core academics. Starting from the 12 o'clock to one o'clock in orange we have sensory efficiency. From one o'clock to two o'clock in gold is assistive technology, which is today's webinar. Right at the three o'clock in dark blue is orientation and mobility. From three to about, from oh, four to five-ish, I would say in kind of a dark magenta is social interaction. Right at six o'clock in green is self-determination. Between about seven and eight is independent living in brighter pink. In light blue at nine o'clock is recreation and leisure. 
between about 10 and 11 in purple is career education and from 11 to 12 in red is compensatory access. So Jake, when we talk about assistive technology, what do we mean by that? <laughs> Thanks for uh, explaining everything to our viewers, Jess, but uh, to answer your question, assistive technology are the tools that um, individuals use with disabilities to help enhance or access uh, different learning materials. Um, this can include electronic equipment such as mobile devices or switches, uh, portable note takers, uh, computer software that range in a variety of different types to meet the uh, individual's um, needs, uh, you know, screen readers, keyboards, uh, software, brailers. Uh, we could go on and on about different types of assistive technology, but um, it's the tools that help people um, that are visually impaired and blind access technology in the way that they need it. So some of the examples of assistive technology, one um, for our students with multiple disabilities is a switch. This is a device that can turn on something, for example, a toy to help teach a student cause and effect. We're not going to get very um, into, we're not gonna talk a lot about switches today because um, we're trying to focus on technology that is free or easy to obtain. Um, and so for those parents and students with multiple disabilities, you probably either already have switches in your home or you would have a hard time getting them. Um, over the summer with school being out. There's mobile devices. So those could be devices that are specific, dedicated devices like a handheld magnifier, or it could be something like your tablet or a cell phone and the apps that you use to make it accessible. Of course, computer software. Um, that's probably, I think, the first thing everybody thinks of when they think of assistive technology. And we'll talk about what some of the options are that you can be using with your student at home. Um, low tech and then our low tech devices so those things that don't require any plugging in but still fall under that umbrella of assistive technology so the first one is um, mobile devices and so one of the first things you can do is explore settings on the phone and tablet and jake what are those settings like so nowadays, most devices that you're talking about, smartphones or tablets or even getting in a little bit to laptops, come with accessible software that can either do some screen to speech on your basic functionality. I believe Apple product um, actually is a little bit more proficient when it comes to that uh, free um, software that's already installed on your computer, so your operating system. Um, and then we can even move into, um, you know, other devices that do mag or other um, adaptations that do magnification. So they'll basically enlarge your apps or your screen for you so that you don't have to hold it, it you know, two inches in front of your face. You can still hold it back, you know, at a good uh, distance around six to seven inches and still be able to uh, view what's on that screen which you know can help with somebody that has a you know eye fatigue so that they're not constantly being so close to the screen and you know it's so kind of again these are things that are already on if you have an Android phone or an iphone in particular um, or a tablet these should already be on there typically you find them under the general settings mm -hmm. um, or your settings menu and then under general and accessibility. There are a lot of really great YouTube videos out there. So if you're not quite sure how to access those on your child's phone tablet or your phone or tablet, um, doing a Google search for type in the name of your device and um, low vision or blindness and there you'll find a video or a website that can walk you through so that you have that chance to explore what's already on there. Um, and Jake mentioned very specifically Apple. I was, I have to admit, I was not an Apple fan before I became a teacher of the visually impaired. And then my mentor teacher told me how these really were the first out of the box products accessible. So they converted me um, and just a little piece of trivia for everybody, but Steve Jobs was really good friends with Stevie Wonder. And so he would actually give him feedback on the accessibility of their products. And mm. so Apple was the first major company to make their products out of the box accessible without having to add a whole bunch of software. Android and the other companies are certainly catching up, but um, I know a lot of us in the world of blindness and low vision have a soft spot for Apple for sort of mm. leading that charge and recognizing it before anybody else did. Mm. So there's our well, little trivia for well, the day. 
that Jesse can be the Apple person. I'm still sticking <laughs> with Android. There's a lot of good settings. And like she there said, are. they're making, you know, advancements every day, you know, when it comes to accessibility features, because not only does it help with individuals with disability or visual impairment, it makes life easier really for everybody when things are more accessible. And one of the other great settings within inside your accessibility features is going to be color contrast. So now we are able to on most devices uh, and phones change the color contrast without having a separate application to help us do that, which is awesome. And another really fun one to explore is your dictation. So that could be okay Google, Siri, um, being able to tell your phone what to do, I think has been, even for those of us with vision, um, a real lifesaver. Mm -hmm. um, so then our next one, of course, is an app called Blindfold Game. So there's some apps that you can download for free that, um, that you can use to make it more accessible or to use those features on the phone. One's called Blindfold Games, and it's pretty much what it sounds like. You're playing games and it's all meant to be what you're doing is based on auditory directions. So that can be, that's what I like for using with kids because for kids who are used to using voiceover or they're used to using those auditory directions, it kind of levels the playing field because they're the ones used to doing that. So now um, mom and dad are the ones that have the learning <laughs> curve. And so that can be a really great one to play with your kids. Um, if you want something more functional, we've, you've heard us talk about Seeing AI, which is an app that you can get that has um, currency readers, optical character recognition, so it can read both uh, computer print and handwriting now, as long as the handwriting is somewhat neat. Uh, um, it's got money reader. I mean, it can, it can tell you people who are standing in front of you. It's very robust and it's free, um, which is kind of what we're focusing on today. Um, there's another one called Ira. That's A-I-R-A. And that is one that we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into wearables on um, in June. So we'll have a two-part series on wearable technology. But there's an app you can get for your phone for Ira, um, which is similar to Be My Eyes. There's a live person on the other end. The difference is Ira is professional. Um, there are people who are trained in it. They're going to keep your information confidential. Um, except um, for, I apologize, I just lost my train of thought. Um, they, uh, <laughs> except for during COVID, they are supposed to be in a place where they do not have um, background noise. Now, some of that, you know, they've said you might start hearing dogs and stuff because they're working from home as well. Um, and then there's also Be My Eyes. So again, these are apps that somebody on the other end of the phone can uh, t uh, tell you what's in front of you. So if you've got that device in your house, let's say you've got one of those new digital washers that are just impossible to use tactile technology to make accessible. They can, you, know, you can point the phone at it and they can tell you what setting the washer is at. That's great. Thanks Jess for sharing that. And sure. Switch for just a second, and Jake is going to start talking about software. Jake, do you want to come run the computer with a? Sure. I apologize about that. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, we're just going to keep rolling here, and luckily for you all, assistive technology is something that I know quite a bit about, and uh, I think it's something that we could talk for, honestly, about days, and I know when uh, some of you guys talk about um, or take that survey, assistive technology is always at the top of the list, so uh, moving forward, we will be talking more about assistive technology, and especially as it applies in today's world, so uh, hopping right into it. Um, exploring, uh, you know, and, and tools that you can use or explore and tools. So when when she's talking about different types of uh, web accessibilities and features as well, we have Google Chrome, we have Firefox. Uh, there's a bunch of different Internet explorers and different types of software will work better with particular web browsers. For example, we find that Firefox as a web browser um, is much more accessible when it comes to using JAWS. I think that's believe, or because of the underwriting code that it uses on how it searches. It doesn't really mess up, um, you know, JAWS and dictations on how those work. Um, but those are all things that I think everybody should explore for themselves to see, you know, what works better. Um, 
screen reader software that I know you guys, uh, a lot of you have heard about is JAWS. That's one of the most popular ones on the market today uh, as far as screen reader software goes. It's fully accessible with a lot of different other programs out there and is um, used, I would say, you know, primarily by indiv individuals that have little to no sight left. So highly recommend it. I know as of now, JAWS, I believe until the end of July is offering free uh, license agreements. A lot of other companies are doing this as well, including ZoomTex, um, just to give users at home uh, the ability to have this software that is, you know, normally around six hundred dollars for you know a year copying right agreement that then can be updated they're giving you know that free until the end of uh, july right now so that people at home can access the materials that they need zoom text uh, another really popular one uh, zoom text uses magnification um, to blow up the screen in certain sections it also has some functionality when pertaining to uh, screen reading um, it's limited in this fashion, but can be very helpful, helpful for somebody that may be losing their vision um, over a period of time and then slowly helping them transition into JAWS. Now, a couple years ago, Fusion came out, which was a combination of both of these programs put together. It had some popularity and is still being used today. We hear that it may end up uh, phasing out here within the next couple years just because the amount of users uh, that have applied and used that program have been lower. Um, typically, if you're a JAWS user, you're going to stay a JAWS user. If you're a Zoom text user, you're going to stay a Zoom text user. And, and just like all of us, you know, once we become comfortable and familiar with a certain software or product, that's what we want to keep using. We want to stay with it because that's what we know. We don't want to overcomplicate things. So uh, by far, JAWS and Zoom text are two of the most software, uh, accessible softwares that we, um, you know, hear and talk about and use even at Alpha Point today. Uh, dictation software. I believe that this is awesome for um, sighted individuals as well as visually impaired or blind. Um, and basically you dictate what you want the computer to do. So it does take some training um, to get the dictation software to understand the words and the vocabulary that you are using. Um, it does not actually take that long. I even use this a lot in college. So I would dictate to the computer um, what I would want it to write. So it makes writing a 23 page pain or you know, a term paper a lot shorter, especially with how fast I talk. So I'll make sure I slow it down a little bit. But uh, Dictation is also a great software for individuals that maybe have uh, mobility issues or are, can't access the keyboard in the same type of fashion, but want to be able to keep up with, um, you know, the good speed of how everybody else, their work colleagues or peers are doing as well. So good stuff. And all this software, you guys, um, I know there's going to be free license agreements up to a certain date, but typically this, this is software that does cost uh, individuals uh, money to get and then updates come out and you can purchase some updates or some of those are free just to make sure everything's working appropriately. Moving on, activities, uh, low-tech kind of devices. Um, this is something that Jesse still uses today uh, to work on different types of math problems. It's been around for ages and ages and ages. Uh, it's very simple, low-tech. I've even seen uh, individuals make their own abacus. Uh, we do sell some of these in the Connecting Point store um, that can't come into right now, but you will be able to order those. These are online, but it's a great resource. It's very low tech and it's a great strategy and tool to teach beginners, you know, how to add and subtract and, you know, just keep track of numbers. Uh, Brailers, these come in all sorts of, um, you know, different sizes and shapes. They've been around for a long time. It's another low tech uh, kind of device, but, you know, today and 
today's world, we have what's called refreshable brailers, which I think have been a huge turning point for someone to be able to keep up with Word documents and not have to have those uh, in your traditional Braille material on paper. So essentially a refreshable Braille display, which oh, I thought would be next, um, it takes the element of a Braille transcribist out of the picture. So if you have a teacher or, or a teacher or a boss, um, you know, submit to you um, a paper in word format or even uh, through an email, it then translates that into Braille, depending on how many um, or how big your Brailler is and how many lines that you're working with. They come again in different, you know, sizes and shapes and also functionalities on what they can do as far as pairing or Bluetooth or connect to the internet. But it takes the, that information and then translates it back into Braille so that the individual can read it. And then at the end of a sentence or a line or a topic, that they have just read about, then they can hit a button that refreshes that Braille that pops up the next sentence so that they can move on. And then vice versa, you can write something in Braille and then that will be transcribed back to a word format or text. So essentially you're cutting out the, the middle person that had to do that before and the reason why a refreshable Braille display is so good and I know that's not low tech is because um, it's about speed. You know, whenever you can do things quicker and more efficient, you, you're keeping up with everybody else. And in today's world with technology and how fast everything changes from one minute to the next, and even in our environment today, uh, that's essential. Monoculars, um, those are devices that an individual can use to, uh, you know, hold up to their eye to magnify something that's farther away or closer to them. Uh, certain individuals with uh, certain levels of visual impairment will still use a monocular to drive if they do pass that driving uh, class or lesson. Uh, magnifiers, these come in all uh, different types of sizes, shapes, and strengths. Um, a lot of the times they will, you know, come paired with a light so that an individual is reading something very closely. They can have a light on it and then it will magnify what's being held under there. This is something that individuals can just throw in their pocket, use with them, you know, while they're on the run to get to uh, one place to the next, you know, see what's going on. I uh, used a magnifier whenever I was a kid to burn some ants. I would not suggest that in today's world. <laughs> Alpha Point can help. We can help in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, when it comes to assistive technology, that is something that we all use. And in today's world, we're using it even more for work, for communications, to keep up on our social life, to do research. So the ability to have the assistive technology that you need in order to use the devices, um, it, it's crucial in today's world. And also having the understanding on how to use it effectively and quickly. So what I mean by that too is JAWS is all based around hotkeys. So the better you understand and know hotkeys and which ones do what, the quicker and more efficient you're going to be at navigating JAWS and, you know, understand what it is that you're doing. We have comprehensive rehabilitation services here at Alpha Point um, that can help you understand and learn assistive technology. Uh, Parent Connect is the Facebook page that we use. It's a closed group for parents um, to share share resources. I post information on about registration for camps or events or programs that we're doing. It's just a, a way again to for us to be social with one another. Tech camp. Okay. I will spend a little bit of time talking about this. As of last week, uh, we are Alpha Point is turning technology camp virtual. What does this mean? Um, well, we will not be meeting in person to host technology camp this year. If you still need a laptop, we have those and we'll be sending those out with either Zoom text, uh, which is magnification software or JAWS. And these laptops will also have uh, cameras on them so that we are able to use different uh, video platforms forms to still communicate. Um, we're still hosting technology camps starting June 22nd. 
And uh, the other thing, you know, we'll be sending out a uh, registration for this on Monday in the new platform, in the new way, so that individuals can register that maybe couldn't come before to do that. We'll, the registration process will also look just a little bit different so that Alpha Point uh, can understand exactly where your tech skills lie and uh, what you need to complete that. Now, if you have your own laptop, accessible software that you need, a camera and good Wi-Fi connection, the cost for tech camp will be lowered and you can use that uh, laptop to be part of virtual tech camp. We'll be really concentrating on a lot of different uh, free software, some of them that we met today, but also cloud-based software and uh, we'll be hosting a lot of it through Google Classrooms. The reason we're doing this is because it doesn't matter where you're at. You, If you have those four basic things, a laptop, accessible software, a camera, and good good web um, or internet access, if we use uh, online platforms or Google apps, then it doesn't matter what type of operating system or laptop that you have, you can be a part of technology camp. So we're hoping to open this up, you know, to a much larger audience so that a lot of individuals can participate. I still will only have 30 laptops to send out to people. So once we get registration open on Monday for virtual tech camp, then, you know, first come first serve on that. And individuals that have already registered, they have priority first, um, you know, as far as those laptops are concerned. So Monday we'll be releasing more info. If you got questions on that, you just let me know. Uh, comprehensive Rehabilitation Services. Jesse's back, and uh, I talked hey a little bit about this earlier, but Jess, I'll let you take CRS over if you would like. Sorry about that. We had a minor uh, snafu, glitch, glitch in the matrix, but it's all good now. So for Comprehensive Rehab Services, we do offer assistive tech training as one piece of that. So if you have a case open with Vocational Rehabilitation Agency, um, you can ask the counselor if there are some specific things that you're needing for school or for work to learn. And the amazing Jim Fett Gather, our assistive technology instructor, can help you with that. Um, if you don't want to go through a vocational rehab agency, we also do have some self-pay and tutoring options as well. So that's rehab in a nutshell. <laughs> And then of course, while Jake is working the computer, we have the connecting point store. Yeah. So some of those low tech solutions, such as the hand, the fixed handheld magnifiers, you can get from the connecting point. It is by appointment only right now due to COVID-19. But if you call 816-237-2020 or 2020, because you know, 2020 vision, oh, we're so clever. Oh. Um, you can make an appointment to visit the store, see what kind of things we have. We have a lot of low-tech solutions. So we have monoculars, we have fixed magnifiers, we have talking watches, talking alarm clocks, um, all of those sort of lower technology devices that you can use uh, just throughout your day to make things easier. So before we get to questions, um, we do want to say thank you for joining us on our assistive technology expanded core at home. This is a topic that we will be delving into further. So on June 18th will be the first of our two part session on wearable technology. That one will focus primarily on technology for low vision users that provides magnification um, because we know that wearables are a big question on everybody's mind. Um, and so we want again, want to say thank you for joining us. If you are wanting to support our mission, to help those with vision impairment achieve their dreams and aspirations and help provide amazing content like this, go to www.alphapoint.org. There is an E on the end of Alpha Point, um, and there you, you can donate. You can also call 816-421-5848. And if you are visually impaired or you know somebody who's visually impaired that would benefit from our services, again, you can go to www.alphapoint.org or call 816-421-5848, and we would be happy to be of assistance. Um, so the next question that we have, Jake, is yep. are you going to have adventure camps this summer? Yes, we are still planning on having adventure camp. Um, we've made a lot of modifications, and we will be releasing that registration soon. We just had to make sure we understood uh, everything that, 
needs to take place at camp to ensure the safety of, you know, the campers and the volunteers and the staff. Now, the one big update on camp that I can tell you is we will be combining camp this year. So traditionally, we've had a day camp uh, for younger campers and an overnight residency camp for those older campers. We will be combining those camps this year to have one a larger camp with uh, more groups so that will give us smaller numbers. Uh, that information will be coming out here very soon on how to register and you know where you got to sign up, what paperwork you need to submit and all that good stuff. Again, you can email me. Um, I've been just a, a little bit slow on getting back to some of those emails about tech camp and adventure camp because I didn't have all the answers yet. So as of yesterday, I have those pieces. I've been replying to those emails to let people know uh, camp registration will be out soon and on how to do that. We do want to say thank you to everybody for your flexibility and bearing with us as we try to reimagine what our services looks like during this time. We want to continue to serve your children, but we also want to make sure children are safe. And I can say that having watched what Jake has been doing, um, that I would trust my kids with him in a heartbeat. Uh, they're really making sure that everybody's safe. I've been spending the night here at Alpha Point to make sure <laughs> that we figure Not out. Quite. Him. Yeah. Not quite. Not quite. But a almost. Lot. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> almost. just to make sure I thank and the staff here of everything so that we're just very well prepared on how to serve our campers and our students and our clients because by far that is like what Jesse was saying our, our number one priority. So it's just taken us a little bit to figure that out but uh, we're there and we're going to push forward together. What other questions um, do does anybody have about how you can support assistive technology in the home? Um, this can be one of the easiest pieces of the expanded core curriculum because there is so much out there, especially that's out of the box accessible these days, which is fantastic. But then it can also be one of the hardest because um, some of the stuff can be very complicated to use. Um, but the nice thing is that we are seeing companies like Freedom Scientific offering up licenses for free through June 30th. Mm, I told them to the end of July earlier because I didn't know. So, um, last I heard, yeah, so through okay. June 30th for Zoom, Text, and JAWS. And of course, anything can change at any time with the virus. Um, but it's nice to know that there are companies out there using that as part of their response. And Jake, I don't know if you mentioned this, but if you but tech camp if you get one of our computers it does include a free license for a year right correct correct it does either a zoom text license or a jaws Yaw license depending on what type of accessible software uh, your camper your child needs all right well if there are no other questions that means jake was just super duper thorough in answering the questions <laughs> um don't forget to join us next week as we continue our journey through the expanded core curriculum and then starting June 18th, we will do our two-part series on wearable technology. Um, we talked about including it today, but we felt there was so much information out there that to really do that topic justice, it needed to be its own webinars and that today we would focus on the ones that are available at little to no cost for you. So we'll see everybody next week and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks guys. You're fine.